Hey guys, hope you're doing great. Uh, so this is episode three of making an animated series in Blender. So yeah, yesterday we did uh, this book opening sequence, which is which is going to be the introduce introduction part of the yeah like the the title sequence of the episode. Now. To, to add on that, uh, this, uh, I'm, I've just made some crystals that I'm going to be using for the series and uh, I think they look awesome and uh, they can, you, if you look closely, there is some bit of animation in them. It's like a galaxy inside uh, the crystals there and uh, they also react to the camera movement. You can see some of the rays. I'm not sure if that detail will come through in the YouTube video, but uh, yeah, you can see there is rays that react to the camera movement as the camera moves uh, the rays also move i just want to talk a little bit of, about how i made these crystals i uh, just uh, to yeah the mesh itself is nothing uh, that complicated you can see this is a simple cube but uh, it also handles that you can even be on the inside and uh, still look at and i think it still looks quite interesting and when you turn on or when you hit play all of this is animated i have no keyframes here and uh, the movement of these crystals is based on the frame so when i change this you can see, yeah are tied to uh, the movement of the frame so let me just talk about that for a second and uh, i can see even i that you can apply this to any meshes and uh, it would still look nice you can see applying it to a Suzanne head and it makes it look like there is a galaxy inside of those crystals and uh, that's exactly what we are going for here just works perfectly I think yes yeah, so to make these crystals I used a bunch of things to do here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to, I want to talk about is uh, how those um, kind of uh, light or energy energy particles are moving. So I'm using a driver and uh, the way I made these, those energy areas to move. Uh, so I started with uh, this Voronoi uh, texture and uh, I mapped it to a texture coordinate mapping. And the only thing I changed here was the rotation is the only thing I'm, 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 I'm animating uh, here and I'm animating the Z property rotation property uh, if I edit the driver here you can see that I'm animating I have an expression set to frame uh, divide by 100 so each frame in blender is divided by 100 to get the value of uh, rotation and because the frames change you get that simple animation without doing a lot of work. Uh, another thing I notice here is that uh, if you want to use this expression, make sure you add, you select, you add an object here, a target object. Otherwise, you're going to get um, an error here. So if I remove this, you can see I get a Python restricted security error something. So I just need to first add in my frame divided by 100, and. Uh, it should work but uh, if you remove this uh, this uh, object it usually gives you an error so make sure you have something there uh, to get rid of that error uh, then those are the larger beams so after animating them I I use uh, the math the math node using the power operation uh, to make them more contrasted uh, so, so that they are more thin uh, now, if you change the exponential value here, you can see you can make them like those thin energy beams. I also played with the scale a bit, I think. Actually, I didn't, but yeah, so you might want to, yeah, the scale of the Voronoi here. If you want larger beams or larger energy fields or lesser, smaller energy fields. And then I also did a smaller version very thin version small small energy beams like this they're also using the same uh, <clears throat> they're also using the same driver animation except I'm dividing them by 500 I found that uh, because they are smaller uh, they are smaller 
they have a smaller scale. Uh, if I left them at, a, at uh, this scale, the same scale, they were animating too fast, so I had to divide them with a larger value to make them slower, like you see here. Uh, nothing different here, uh, except the scale here, of course. I made them smaller so that I can be smaller and I'll still use the power uh, operation to have those kind of energy beams, smaller energy beams, and then added, mix them with this larger ones so to get a more detailed yeah, sequence like that. And uh, I colorized this to have something like that. And uh, just to make sure that this kind of, kind of uh, yeah, is uh, bright enough, I used a huge saturation value, a huge saturation node, and uh, increase the value to about 200 uh, because I needed to mix it with other nodes uh, that were that we are more powerful than it so yeah giving it a higher value make sure that uh, uh, they can be seen uh, so let's talk about those other nodes so and i'm talking about how i made this here so let's go directly from this noise modifier so the way i achieved this was just simply adding a mass grave as a vector value here uh, to start to make these kind of uh, i don't know squiggly uh, textures nothing fancy here and then use a car ramp to cut out some of the uh, the lines that were there and uh, used fresh nail because i wanted to, ha to have the camera angle affect how these are rendered and you can see when you have fresh nail you have uh, the way your scene is rendered or the materials changes with the direction of view and uh, then i use that to kind of have an effect on these lines because they are not animated uh, so then i colorized them using a color ramp to get this color effect and uh, mix that with what i had before from these uh, energy particles and uh, so i used them uh, an rgb sorry an, a blend mode with the operation of add to blend the two and then fed that into let's see what was this yeah as I said, uh, if you move your camera, let me just show you the, from the final thing. When you move your camera around, there are some light rays that moves with the camera. So to have a, to achieve that, I used a camera data data node, and uh, I used the z depth and uh, fed that in. Use that as a vector for the Voronoi. To get these lines that would act as a ray rays for my yeah for the for these crystals you can see when i move my camera those rays move as well then i uh, use the power node to make them to cut out some of that details come on, cut, cut out some of the details and then use the add node sorry use the color ramp to colorize this so you can see it makes things look more glassy so then again to make this come out uh to be to make this blend out uh, with this other uh, material i increased uh the value of that of the hue and saturation so that they are more powerful and i blending them with the results of what we had before to get this and i animated and everything then i fed that into the principal shader but uh I also used this here as uh, the roughness of our material and I also made sure to have the to give this a transmission value of one and uh, an alpha value uh, the other thing you have to do is to make sure that uh, in your uh, settings here you turn on alpha blend and uh, screen space refractions and in the settings, render settings, make sure you turn on screen space reflections and there's refractions here uh, so that you can see through uh, the crystals nicely. And uh, yeah, so this also wa works very nicely using cycles. Uh, probably I don't usually want to use cycles when I'm uh, recording because uh, my computer just can't handle it very nicely. So this is what it looks like. I just needs a lot of samples and uh, yeah not going to worry about that because I don't use cycles that much 
and uh, if you add some lights in here you can see these crystals also interact with light quite nicely so yeah this is all going to be used in our animated series of uh, the Asylia, the Asylia Moors and uh, uh, as you already know I've already set, set up a channel where I'm going to upload the full episodes too so if you want to subscribe to that already 71 of you have subscribed which is awesome so if you want to subscribe and uh, uh, wait for the full episodes to be released you can go and subscribe there uh, you can also watch the the full time lapse of uh, making process of making these uh, crystals uh, you can watch that on my second channel, uh, Blender Money. I can see all the also the previous time lapse is uploaded there, uh, so you can watch that. And uh, the reason why I would recommend you watch the time lapses as well because I go through a lot of iterations, uh, trying out different things uh, that sometimes don't work out the way I want, or sometimes don't look as uh, don't give me the look I want, but uh, they might be the kind of look you want to go for. So if you watch the time lapse, you can get. A few tips that I don't talk, usually talk about here because I, I want to keep these videos a bit shorter. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll get back to you when we do something else.